Hey everyone, um, thanks for checking into this next video. Hey, if you saw the first one, uh, we went through all these sort of front panel controls on the Elmira 2. Um, I'd recommend watching that one first if you haven't already. So this second one, we're going to go into some of the more advanced controls uh, of the Elmira 2 and just I want to give you a quick overview of what that could do because like I said in the first video, this thing is packed full of features uh, and some of the things that are packed in here, you can't see from the front panel. So, uh, Neutral Labs has a cheat sheet available, which I definitely recommend um, familiarizing yourself with or having on hand when you're using this. Uh, have a good read of the manual as well, the main user manual, because it's going to show you how to make the most out of that cheat sheet, really. is. And then the cheat sheet, once you understand how to access some of the things, the cheat sheet gives you a really just quick access guide on prompting you how to get to the things that you want to do. Uh, but bef before we get into those things, there was one thing I missed in the last video which I did want to cover um, and that was in our Euro rack inputs up the top here where we've got gate mod wave and tune as CV inputs. We've also got these envelope outputs for each voice and so that takes the output signal off our pads and then we can route them to other things. So that's really nice. We can, you know run our long envelopes and have it impact our filter for example or other things as well so and we can you know route that over here to the utilities and then it just gives us you know a bunch more flexibility of things that we can do so i just wanted to touch on that it's really cool there is an envelope output on every voice that you can make use of to make your patches a bit more interesting so uh, that said uh, let's focus on this left-hand side where these buttons are. Uh, the buttons are going to be mostly what we're focusing on today in conjunction with these PG buttons for each voice. They're often used in conjunction with one another. So the first one up here is our sync button. It's like a tap tank tempo and it will become really useful for our sequences and things like that. But let's have a just quick look. If we tap on that, we're going to see we're going to start to create a clock pulse and then if you beat that in at a different pulse, it will um, respond accordingly. So, moving on. Um, mod P. Mod P is like a series of presets for um, modulation options that occur to each voice. And so, you can cycle through them and by default, they affect all four voices. And so, if we click through them, you'll notice that the LED color changes. I would refer to your manual to um, just to be sure what each color does because there are a few that are sort of similar and a few that are a little bit abstract as well. So uh, I'll see if I can remember them. Otherwise, I've got my manual here as well and I will refer back to it. But um, yeah, so basically each mod preset is controlled by the mod knob in each voice which is going to control the amount of that effect or modulation sort of um, effect on each voice and like i said by default when you click through it it's going to apply to all four voices if you want it to apply to just one voice then you can hold the pg button and press the mod p button and cycle through to the color you want and then that color will be applied to that of voice only that makes sense. That sounds pretty good. And it's actually flashing to let you know that it, there's one there at least that's different from the others. And so let's go back to um, just a standard one. We'll go to red. That's what it is when you boot. Um, so red is what our normal voice sounds like. And when you use your mod control, it creates a, a detune when it's in red. So that will start to create a width. Still got a bung arm, so I'm gonna. So you can hear that detune now. Cool. So the next one, green, green. So green is creating a sub oscillator underneath. So that's going to really fatten out these voices. So green gives us sub oscillator. 
So the, uh, I think this is called Mint. Mint is a chord mode. So when you play one, we have a bunch of different chords in there. There's um, a number of different chords pre-programmed in. So they're gonna follow the pitch note. So pre-programmed chord intervals. Um, go and check out the manual and just be sure what each one is and in what position you can expect it in the range of that mod knob. But you're able to get some really interesting results with that one. Uh, Violet. Violet is the sort of the wave shaper out of Meg. If you're familiar with the Neutral Labs Meg um, Eurorack stuff, um, there, Meg is a wave shaper which creates some really interesting um, shapes depending on what you put into it. So this is sort of that idea implemented here in Elmira 2. Uh, the blue one, I think the blue one is a bit of a distortion. It's like a bit of a drive that just thickens up your signal a little bit. Then we go into this one, which I think is white. White is noise. Oh, no, got that one wrong. Let me just check. Sorry, this is cyan, which is, yeah, not quite white. Um, but it's a bit mangler. Yeah, really interesting different harmonic tones that you can get from that one. Um, then yellow. Yellow is a bit rate reducer. You can really hear that. Yeah, that really gritty lo-fi sort of vibe coming in there. Oh, there's our white. Cool. So, white is noise. We can add some noise, or lots of noise. Only noise. Then we go into pink. Pink is a low pass filter. I reckon this is a really interesting feature because we've obviously got our filter up here, but now what we're doing is being able to put um, a second filter on every voice. Um, so this is like global filtering, but now we have individual voice filtering. So we've got low pass. And then we have high pass. And then we're back to the start. So all of these things, generally when you're clicking through, either after power on or when it's solid up here, are going to apply to every voice. And then you control the amount via the mod knobs on each voice. If you hold the PG button and press the mod P button and cycle through to the one you want, then that will only apply on the voice that you've pressed the PG button on and then the others will still be whatever they were before. So, a bit of a crash course on the mod programs. Um, really interesting, heaps more like um, options to do things in there. I think that's a really cool thing to, to, to think about. The next one down in this left-hand set of buttons is chromatic mode. I did touch on chromatic mode. Um, there was one extra feature that I wanted to talk about. So chromatic mode changes our tune um, scaling from continuous, like that where it's all smooth, to a chromatically stepped tuning. So again, um, when you're just pressing it normally, it's a global across all four voices, but if you only want some of them, uh, you can do the same thing. So we hold down PG and press chromatic, and then let me put them off. Let's turn chromatic off first. So that's smooth, and then we want, let's say three to be chromatic. That one's stepped. That one's smooth. So, yeah, you also have this option of being able to choose which voices have a chromatic mode applied to them. Um, so, that's our, yeah, mod programs, 
chromatic modes and its individual assignment. Then the next one I want to check out is our um, our sequencer. So I just want to sequence. If if by default, if you just press the sequence button, it only sequences the first voice. Similarly to those other functions, we can hold down our P PG buttons. So I'm going to hold down three, or maybe just two. My fingers letting me only hold two. I'm going to hold down two and then press the record button once. So now I'm I'm lit. It's red, so I'm going to be programming these first two voices. So then I want to just audition them. And I might actually put chromatic mode on everything. That's kind of a nice little tone. Uh, and now to save that into a step, I'm going to press the record button once and it will flash at me. So I just flashed quickly and I've saved that into a step. So now I can program another one. That sort of works. Let's put in our record again. Might put in like a two of them. And then and then to trigger it, we can hold down record or we can just hit play. And providing you have a sync signal, it will play. So if you don't have that tapping away yet and you press play, nothing happens. Uh, and then you need to make sure that sync is running. Otherwise, so sync is a clock pulse that's going to give us our measures which trigger the uh, the sequences and the different steps in the sequence. So I'm going to hit play now. It should go, but then the last thing you need to do to be able to hear sound is make sure it's in drone mode. So we're going to hold down the PG. So that'll be voice one. And voice two, I'm going to hold down PG. Okay, so a couple of things there. You need to press play, you need to make sure you have a clock, and you need to make sure that you're in droning mode for to be able to hear these sounds in a sequence. So that's the sequence are sort of in a nutshell. Um, then one last really cool thing which I want to talk about is these advanced um, codes which you can program into the Elmira, which unlock a whole bunch more features as well, which is really exciting. So for this one, I definitely, definitely recommend getting your cheat sheet. Uh, the whole second page of the cheat sheet has all the different codes that you can do. And I just want to go through a few of them. Uh, I'm really excited that there's a reverb in here. So by default, the reverb is off. And now to program these codes, we need to hold that mod P button. So we're going to hold down mod P and then press a code as it's written in the cheat sheet. So to turn the reverb on, it's 442, which means we're going to use voice four twice and then voice two once so we're going to go four four two now we should have a reverb on let's go again oh, i think i was pressing the wrong button I was. There it is. I was pressing the chromatic button. So you want to be making sure you press that mod P button. Um, there it is. So we got a nice little reverb there. Now the other thing which I wanted to, um, you can add, you can um, control different sync, sync in the um, delay. So by default, it is a free running delay, but you can make it sync. One of the other things that I wanted to um, just try out was filters so with these different codes we can change the filter type so by default 
Uh, we have... Oh, yeah. By default, we just have a low pass. But let's try a ladder. So we're going to go 3 3 1. So we go mod P, 3 3 1. Then we can also try things like high pass, which is going to be um, 3 3 4. Cool, 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 cool. And now we're going to play our little sequence that we had before and have a bit of a jam. So I'm going to be droning. Well, that's it. Hopefully, you enjoyed some of those new features. Go check it out for yourself. There's heaps of stuff packed into here. Make sure you got that cheat sheet. Make sure you have a quick look over the manual just to, you know, remind yourself how to do some of those things. But definitely, the cheat sheet is what you want to have in front of you most of the time until you get comfortable with where these features all are. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, I'd love it if you just like the video and subscribe to the channel for more things like this. Um, keen to hear what you think in the comments below if you've got one i'd love to hear what you're doing with it um yeah thanks again for checking it out see you in the next one